Well, hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to your calculus video over limits and their properties. And you have this, this table of properties in front of you. And so I'm not going to read this to you. I'll let you refer back to this. So we're going to go on ahead and do some examples. We're going to give that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is 2. So as you're approaching a on the x-axis, the y value is approaching 2. And for g, as you're approaching a, that y value is approaching 3. And we're supposed to find the limit if it exists. And so on A, we have the limit as x approaches A of 5 times g of x. And so what I'm going to do is refer to the constant multiple rule. It's number 5 on your list, which says that I'm going to do 5 times the limit as x approaches A of g of x. So you can move this limit inside, and then once you find that limit, you can just multiply it times 5. And so it tells me that that limit as x approaches a of g is 3. So this works out to be 5 times 3, or it's 15. So that's the answer to the first one. Uh, the second one, part b, is simply the quotient rule for limits. You can take the limit of the top and the limit of the bottom and then divide them. And so as x approaches a of f, we know that that's 2. And as x approaches a of g is 3, and that's 2 thirds. It's fairly easy and straightforward. So that would be the limit there. Now we're going to take a look at two special trig limits. I'm going to do this graphically. I'm going to show you what they mean. So we're going to come down here and look at the first one and then the second one. Now the first one, I've got both of these in y equals. I'm using x's instead of thetas. That's not a problem. But I'm going to look and see as theta approaches 0 what those y values are. So we only have sine x over x being graphed here. And you can see from the left, from the left we are approaching 1. And from the right, we are approaching 1. And you should remember from pre-calculus that from the right and from the left, if they're approaching the same y value, then that is the limit. And so this limit is going to equal 1. So as long as these two things match and they're, it's approaching 0, this answer will be 1. For example, um, sine of 7x over 7x, as long as x is approaching 0, this answer will be 1. All right, let's go back and look at the 1 minus cosine x over x. And that graph, I'm going to get back to y equals here. We'll turn that one off. Come down and turn this one on. And then we're going to graph it. And let's see. So this is a little different picture. From the left, we're approaching 0. And from the right, we're approaching 0. So that answer is 0. Now, I want you to notice that if I were to ask the calculator for a value at 0, it would be um, undefined. You see no y value there. We're going to look at that algebraically. Let's just do that now. We know this answer is 0. But if I were to plug in 0 for theta, I would have gotten 1 minus the cosine of 0, all divided by 0, which is 0 over 0, because the cosine of 0 is 1. And this is called an indeterminate form. This does not mean undefined. It does not mean this means it has an answer you just got work to do. So graphically, we realize that that was 0. So let's do a couple examples. Um, like this example here, if these two match, then this answer is 1, as long as the value is approaching 0. Well, they don't match, but I'm going to take advantage of some properties of limits. I really want this to be a 5 down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out a 1 fourth, and I'll have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 5x divided by x. That 4 just got scooched right out here. And so I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 5 so that I can put a 5 down here. So I'm going to multiply the outside by 5 and then on the inside I multiply the bottom by 5. So there's my 5 over 5 or just 1. And what I've done is I've created this this situation like this example here where these two match and they're approaching zero. So this whole limit right here is one. And so we'll take that limit times five fourths and my answer to this is five fourths. All right, let's do another limit example before we hit the squeeze theorem. Um, if you have a monomial on the bottom, that means one thing, and you have a polynomial on the top, you have the right to separate this. So I'm gonna have the limit as x approaches 0 of 2x over x plus the limit 
as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. So I did 2x over x and then sine x over x. So these are like common denominators. You could scooch them back together if you wanted to, but I can evaluate these limits separately. These x's cancel, and the limit of a constant is just the constant. And we know that this one is just 1, and so that answer is 3. Okay, last thing is the squeeze theorem, and that is, this is what to do if you can't answer the limit. You're going to try and squeeze it in between two known functions, so let me show you what I mean. All right, so we're going to have the graph of y equals 2. The graph of y equals 2 is a straight line going through y equals 2. Let's see if I can hit that there. Oh, I didn't do too bad. So there's y equals 2. Then, a little arrow on the end, arrow on the end. Then we also have f of x, which we don't know what that is, but it's always in between 2 and x squared plus 2. Now, x squared plus 2 looks something like this. It's a parabola. It has a y-intercept of 2. And so we know that f of x is always in between these two graphs. And if it's in between these two graphs, and these two graphs happen to meet, then we are squeezing or forcing f of x to always stay in between there. And so even though I don't know anything about f, I know that since it's always in between 2 and x squared plus 2, then its limit must be the same as their limit. So this answer would be 2. All right, well, that's enough for today, and you guys will work on some limit problems tomorrow in class, and I will see you guys then.